From the Studio 13 Studios in Splendor, Texas, Hank's Think Tank is brought to you by Buster Brown Propane. Quiet on set. Picture is up. All right, roll sound. Rolling. Roll cameras. Cams rolling. And three, two. Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome to Hank's Think Tank. It's the afternoon, and we got Hal and Howie in today. So he's been on the show before. He's a great musician, and we're going to talk about music today. We're going to talk about guitars. We're going to talk about where to go to buy a guitar. Who can play a guitar better than the other? We're going to talk about roots of and origins of music. And Mark's even going to talk about his great Challenger car that he's got. What kind of car is that again? That's a 2013 Dodge Challenger 5.7 Hemi Redline package. Hot. Damn, that's a nice car. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, if that thing didn't break down every 20 minutes, it'd be all right. It's never broken down yet. I'll put a, I'll put a water pump on it. Yeah. But it didn't break down. Water pump go in the motor compartment? Yeah. Okay. It's in the front side. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Howie, good to ha- How- Howie. <laughs> Howie, good to have you aboard. Howlin' like Howie. Howlin' Howie. Howlin' Howie, that's me. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for so, having me again. Thank you for coming out, man. You've been on the show before, obviously. Yeah. And you and were absent. I was absent. Again. You go ahead and say Car it. broke down. I knew, it was oh. I knew he was going to say that. Uh, well, you know, you bought a Dodge, what can we say? <laughs> But it's good to good to finally meet you and welcome back, man. Thank you. Likewise, I'm I'm glad to meet you too. And uh, I don't know uh, what he did to deserve having such a good sidekick like you. I don't, He's you just lucky, man. Yeah. We just, grew up together, so oh. yeah, we met in high school and been friends ever since. And uh, Mark's a great guy. Does a lot for the studio. Does a lot for the show. Yeah, and, we uh, were just a, a couple of hippies and and met in gym class. And yeah, and he wanted to play guitar badly. And so he, he's achieved that. He plays guitar very badly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it worked out. <laughs> well, I'm wondering, where, perfect. where did y'all go to high school? Northbrook Senior High in Spring Branch. Yeah, Spring, Spring Branch. Branch yeah, in Houston. Northwest side of Houston. Yeah, and it was really nice back then. It's not so nice now, but, man, what a great school. I mean, it was really, the whole school was, well, the whole school was carpeted, except for the dining area. Fancy. And the walls. So, some of the walls were carpeted, from what I remember. Oh, okay. And a lot of the classrooms were modular, so they could move walls around and create classrooms as they needed them. That place was, it was cool. That's pretty yeah, good. Where'd really you cool. go to school? How New we... Caney High School, class of 1989. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so you're, you're an OG, huh, originally uh, from out here? I'm telling you, I was born uh, in Houston at Jeff Davis Hospital, and, and they tore it down after I was born there. there <laughs> we can't improve on that, so <laughs> I, get rid of this building. I grew up on Wallace Drive in Porter, Texas, and wow. uh, yeah, I moved away for about eight years, and then I came back in '02. Been here ever since. So, when did you start playing music? I know you're a multi instrumentalist too. Yes, sir. So, when did you start playing music? I mean, uh, was it just really got into one? it at New Caney sixth grade, uh, really? playing trombone in the band. Yeah, trombone. Yeah, that's my first instrument. I mean, wow. I, I pecked around on a piano a little bit before that, but just yeah. messing around on it. But, uh, but yeah, I started out on trombone, and, and trombone by the end of the sixth grade. Hard. No, it's not harder than anything else, really. Just to have, have uh, you know, we, we excel where we spend our time, you know. There you go. But right. uh, yeah. by the end of my sixth grade year, I, I had already started playing several other instruments because I couldn't leave mine alone. I mean, the other instruments alone. Yeah, know, it's that's like cool. I, I want to find out how this thing works. You know, yeah. I was intrigued by the music. Yeah. yeah. I think I'd have a problem with anything that's not fretted for some reason. We had a guy in here a week ago with an upright bass. Mm-hmm. Great bass player, but I was mesmerized at the fact that he could play an unfretted instrument that that great. Mm-hmm. I mean, even with something fretted, I don't know where I'm at half the time. So I mean, you know, that's just it amazes me. Oh, and yeah. trombone's the same deal. I mean, yeah. How do you know how to? I guess you just get used to it. You get used to it. Well, um, just uh, to get real detailed about it, even if you have a trumpet that has three valves. Mm-hmm. Uh, or a guitar with frets on it. You know, those are only approximations. You still have to tune as you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, right. we so bends. if you play a C on a trumpet, a concert C, it's one first and third valve. You still have to kick one of the tuning slides out or two of them to mm-hmm. make it play on pitch. Or you can lip it. You can lip, lip the notes just as you bend the string on a guitar. Really? Yeah, yeah. So just because there's a, a key on a piano or, or a key on a sax or a clarinet or a flute or a valve on a trumpet or a baritone or whatever, you still have to tune as you go. Because, so those uh, are guides. Yeah, that's yeah. why every guitar player sounds different. That's right. Playing the same song, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. two completely different like singers. sounds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I could play my guitar and then hand it to somebody else, and it sounds a little different when they're playing it. You yeah. Know? So, you so think when it's did, all in the hands? Uh, the, the, I'd say most of the tone comes from the hands. That's too bad. I guess I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's just uh, I've, I used to think it was more amp, than, like in the electric world, yeah. more amp than uh, fingers. Yeah. But if you start playing some acoustic guitar and you don't have the amp, that kind of tells you whether your tone's suffering or not. Yeah. But yeah, a positive fretting hand right behind the fret without being on top of it mm-hmm. and a real nice positive attack, you know, it, it makes a big difference. It really yeah. does. Yeah, um, even on a wind instrument, how you play it, how you shape your mouth and all that stuff. It's How do we get to talking about that? I don't know, but I like it. It's cool, <laughs> man, you know? Uh, but yeah, yeah, you still got to tune. Who was playing the upright in here? Um, Tom Foolery. Yeah, five piece band. Yeah, great. Best. It's an Americana string band. We're mixing their EP yeah. right now. In fact, yeah. we were doing that before you showed up. Very cool. Yeah, they are yeah. great with the harmonies. They got a fiddle in the band. Mm-hmm. Got it going yeah. on, man. Oh, yeah. that's great. Mm-hmm. Great fiddler, and and they're all yeah talented musicians. They they did really really well. So I when like, did you uh, go to strings and and put the brass away, or do you still? You know, I still the brass? I still do play some brass when I have to. Um, no, <laughs> just, to. you know, it's funny. I, I do some uh, gigs like this year. I've been doing a, a regular gig on the fifth Sunday of every month at a little place in spring called the Track Shack. And, uh, uh what kind well, of place is that? Is that it's, a restaurant? It's kind of an ice house, cool. uh, beer joint kind of place. Yeah. Real low key, no riffraff. I like uh, it. All the patrons are really super sweet people. And, um, and where was that at again? It's at, it's at the corner of Luetta and Hardy in okay. spring. Okay. And uh, it's right by the railroad track, which is, I guess, where they got the name the Track Shack. I like it. And uh, a guy named Buck and his wife, Linda, own it. And uh, uh, when I do those gigs, I'm the front man. I, I'm kind of been moving into doing some of my own gigs lately. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always done some every now and then. But anyway, uh, some, some events happen, and, and uh, so I, I ended up with this gig in my lap. And I thought, okay, well, I'll start doing this. I'll just front the thing. And so... When I do that gig, I just play rhythm guitar because I have a friend, my friend Jody Cameron, playing steel with me, and um, uh, s- several rotating drummers, usually either Joe Busa or Eric Curtis, uh, mm-hmm. and then uh, a guy named Harlan Kubos on the bass, and uh, sometimes I have my friend Gene Keen guest with me on the piano. Uh, but me being freed up to not carry all the rhythm, I can hang my guitar up on a certain song. I like will do Matilda, yeah. uh, that old song by Cookie and the Cupcakes. Yeah. I'll do that one, or I'll do, uh, I don't know, I'll do any number of songs. And if I just feel like it, I'll reach back and grab that trombone and start soloing in the middle of the song, you know. And <laughs> I'll tell cool. the steel, he'll take around, you know, eight bars or whatever, and then I'll bust off some trombone. Of course, my, my chops ain't up, so it's yeah. just kind of like I get what I get. I might frack a note or two or miss a note or two, but it's still fun. It's all entertainment. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's you know, the bottom line. Entertainment. But, yeah, I still play some brass. Uh, I started the strings to get back where you at, what you asked me. Um... The summer between my eighth and ninth grade years, um, I started thinking, man, I'd really like to play an instrument and sing, you know, accompany myself. And I thought, man, piano would be great. Kind of hard to do that with a trombone. Uh, well, exactly, because <laughs> you can sing in it, but it sounds weird. <laughs> Found that out real quick. That'd be cool uh, if you could learn to do that. You'd be the first. <laughs> that's right. I might have given me a job at the circus doing that. Cut <laughs> uh, an to, extra mouth. <laughs> yeah, you know, that could happen. That could happen. I might have a good idea there. There you go. Uh, really, it's all entertainment, right? Yeah. Um, but, uh, I, I decided, you know, it might be cool if I played guitar with this friend that I'd known for, I don't know, four or five years. Uh, his name is Reed Franklin. He lives in Florida now. Okay. And, uh, I met up with Reed and, uh, um, he saw I had a guitar and I, he says, you learn guitar? I said, man, I think I'd like to, uh, my parents just got this for me. He goes, wow, well, I play guitar too. So he grabbed it and he says, oh, you got some problems here. Your strings are real high. So he loaned me a guitar of his and took mine and started repairing it. Cool. And, uh, well, anyway, he started teaching me some notes on the guitar. And all I wanted to learn was C, A minor, F, and G. C, okay. A minor, F, and G. Like all those old 50s songs oh, yeah. and 60s songs. That's all I wanted to learn to begin with so I could play all my oldies favorites because I love oldies. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, I started learning the guitar, and it kind of snowballed from there because – I was pretty decent on the trombone, but I started to learn some of the theory stuff on the guitar, and that kind of made me kind of take notice, wait a minute, I can do these same things on my trombone. I can play these same notes, and on a trombone, I can play those same notes on the guitar. 
So all of a sudden, it was just an explosion of just knowledge mm -hmm. and understanding. Yeah. I finally yeah. kind of got it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, it really, really helped. Um, so then from there, I started messing around with some bass and some mandolin. It was a whole new world of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Once um, I started understanding the basics of music theory uh, as it applies to music and not just the mechanics of the trombone, mm -hmm. it really started to give me a... a a deep understanding of what and plus I was in choir too so I'm I'm kind of a strange musician I mean I'm strange anyway I know <laughs> I said it before y'all did <laughs> um, but uh, I'm I'm one that um, I think all the time on my gigs or I'm charting out songs if I'm singing I I know exactly what note I'm singing all the time mm -hmm. I don't have perfect pitch but I got great relative pitch but I noticed that about you. I yeah. think in solfege, which is do re b, you mm -hmm. know, solfeggio. I say I think in solfege numbers and letters. So at any time I can tell you what number of the scale I'm playing and what its solfege name is and what its letter name is. It's a weird thing, but that just comes from desiring to have the knowledge of all these instruments and the singing and how this all stuff, all the stuff all intertwined. Fits together. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So. Um, yeah, so that's why I've been able to help some of my fellow musicians if we're in the studio, if we're on a gig. I'm like, no, man, those notes there are three, five, six, three, five, six. It's not three, six, five, or whatever it is, you know, and, right. Right. and been able to pick it out just instantly. Now, I've been delving in a little more jazz lately, and that's a little bit of a, a daunting thing. There. Complicated. Well, yeah, it's just a lot of colors, a lot of stuff thrown in together. Oh, yeah. So yeah. when I have a little extra time, I'll study a little bit of jazz stuff. But since I got so many gigs, I just – I don't have time to dedicate to it like I should. That's cool. Uh, or like I would need to if I wanted to be really good at it. So what instrument don't you play that you'd like to play? You know what? I play. I have played everything that I want to play, I think. Um, banjo? Uh, yeah, I can play some banjo. I can play enough banjo to make you think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> but then if they throw something on me like that's really, really hard, I can't do it. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't really. I've only um, played the banjo enough to be able to sell one real well. well that's cool. Uh, there you go. And, and thankfully, there's uh, the second, third, and fourth strings of the banjo are exactly the second, third, and fourth strings of the guitar. Mm -hmm. So if I just stay on the three middle strings of the five-string banjo, You're I can really sound like I know what I'm doing. Uh -huh, yeah. yeah, and but, talking about selling guitars, you work at Fuller Guitar Shop. Yeah, that's right, right, Fuller's Guitar it's on 610 uh, in, in Houston. Y'all yeah. go see Hal and Howie at Fuller's Guitar. Oh, thank you, thank you. So yeah. are you a salesperson there? Or? Yeah, I do yeah. sales, and I do... Um, uh, I, I work on a few instruments. We do have a head tech there, but, okay. but I do a little bit of tech work. And uh, the, probably the biggest part of my job is um, there are three of us, three main guys at the store that uh, Mike Fuller, the owner, has us inspect every guitar that comes in the store. Okay. Uh, and I mean every guitar. And Mike Fuller is a crazy man. As a matter of fact, his own grandkids gave him the nickname Crazy Mike. Because this guy orders so many guitars, it's, it is Texas' largest guitar store. Okay, how big and, is it? Uh, it's uh, it's mm, I don't know how many square feet. I'd have to sit here and calculate it, but but it's just insane. There is more stock in there than should be allowed by law. There's wow. so, so it's a many fire guitars. hazard at this point, huh? I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Let the record show. Uh, but no, it, it's really insane how many guitars there are. So and, it's uh, new, we ship used, them. collector's uh -huh. items. Uh, yep, all three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we got mandolins, some upright basses, uh, you know, a few few things off the beaten path. But mostly, it's just guitars and guitar stuff. Cool. Uh, we don't have any drums, no keyboards, none of that kind of stuff. No, That's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's insane. But, um, so yeah, the biggest part of my job, I would say is the inspections because we inspect them when they get there, uh, then pass them along to our friends, uh, that put them on the internet mm -hmm. and then they'll put them in the shelves in the warehouse. And then when the guitar gets sold on the web or in the store, we put it back on the bench for another check over okay. and strings if it needs it and a wipe down and all that good mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah, there's you know we've got and that's thorough to make sure everything works. It hasn't got any buzzes in the B string and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely, and gotcha. and we want the end user to be totally happy with what they have. And and uh, frankly, when we inspect these instruments, um, if if they don't, we check them according to the manufacturer specs. Okay. If they don't or can't meet the manufacturer specs, we send them back, and we don't discriminate, no matter what brand name, what manufacturer. Okay. It's just a fact of, uh, hey, we don't have time to work on a new guitar. 
we're sending it back to you. Send us a replacement. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I you think know. that's only fair. And I bet you've not got any trouble from the manufacturers on that. If they no. can't meet I'll their bet own. I they appreciate spirits. it, actually. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, and, and that's the thing is, is a lot of times, um, and not disparaging any one group or, or company, but a lot of times the um, what some people term as the big box stores, mm-hmm. um, they, they just simply don't have the personnel nor the resources, nor, you know, time, money, mm-hmm. whatever it is, they just simply don't do that. It's just what I call box in, box out. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're just they out. Get it, they they get numbers. it in, they just yeah, and it sell. goes out the door. Yeah. But but it's it's a different deal uh, where I work there, and it's uh, it's pretty um, – it's humbling, too, because you see uh, everything, you know, and mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if it's a, a you know, $1,000 guitar or a $10,000 guitar. Mm-hmm. If there is some issue with it, we will literally send it back to them and say, oh, sorry. Cool. So is there jam space and all that? So, like, if I was interested in buying a guitar and I was looking at all the high-end guitars, you all have a room I can go into and just play a couple hours, get used to mm-hmm. something? And yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's a, there's two lines of amps in yeah. the electric, and there's plenty of room to sit around. we got stools everywhere. Okay. Uh, that you could sit on a jam. Now, a lot of the real estate right now is taken up with boxes on the sales floor, but yeah. there, there's always a place to sit and try out a guitar. Mm-hmm. Okay, fantastic. And y'all mm-hmm. do repairs and such yeah. as well? Yeah, our head tech, he's uh, he's backed up at the moment. He's backed up about two months. Yeah. And it's the way it is all over Houston. Uh, we are, yeah, oh, yeah, fourth largest city in the nation. However, uh, guitar repair, uh, luthier in general, whether it's violins or whatever it is, you mm-hmm. know, it's that's a very specialized skill set oh yeah and um all of the good guys in town if you have something break on you you will find that all the good guys are backed up yeah uh it's just the way it is because there are so few of them Mm -hmm. and uh, some of the young people today uh i won't go on a rant about work ethic but Mm -hmm. (laughs) some of the young people don't snap to think oh man you know what i could make a lot of money as a brass repairman or you know Mm -hmm. a horn technician or a guitar technician. Mm-hmm. Guitar techs, they, they do very well. Oh, I and, bet they do. Yeah. Well, they're, and, and they're so it's in so, demand. Yeah, yeah. it's d- d- the high demand, and, the, and it's a very specialized skill set. I mean, there's so many little uh, mechanical things that can go wrong and so many details that, um, you know, you can't see them with the naked eye. you got to listen. you got to feel. And, uh, you know, it's a very, very detailed. And uh, our, our head tech is really good. And uh, where I used to work, Andrew's Music mm-hmm. in Porter, uh, Andrew, Another great store. Oh man, he's a great repairman. Have you man. seen the new store? Yeah, it's, when it's Andrew, amazing. Isn't yeah, it? Andrew yeah. took me in there before yeah. um, before he opened up. Yeah, and uh, gave me the ten cent tour. Yeah, I told him, man, that's cool. They just had, uh, as a matter of fact, he just had his twentieth uh, anniversary on August the twenty second or third. Oh, yeah, we started. I helped him start the place back yeah. in back in. Uh, it started really in June of oh three, uh, but didn't open the doors till August the 20th 22nd or 23rd of 03 but yeah. boy it was a long haul there it was uh uh it was really cool but yeah he's a great repairman mm-hmm. he, he's a good um he he, he good. and the tech at um at fuller's i i call them both they're kind of cut from the same cloth in that they're both really good problem solvers mm-hmm. because if there's uh you know 15 ways to skin a canary so that, so to speak they'll find the 17th way or 18th oh, way yeah. you know they'll really find a work around and try to make it work and uh, that's how they stay busy. Yeah. You know, it's it's a matter of um, uh, just knowing the mechanics of it, you know. But, that's it. But, yeah, we got a head tech over there. and uh, But there's three of us that do other tech work at Fuller's, um, what, what I call the, the light load stuff, you know. And, and mm-hmm. our head tech, Yano, his name's Yano, he, he does the heavy lifting. Okay. You know, like all the. Uh, surgery. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. We don't do surgery out front. Neck repairs. So, oh man. In dealing with the thousand or so guitars that you deal with, in, in in a month probably, on the acoustic side, what do you think would be your favorite string set? Uh, who, what brand of strings do you like the most? Oh, uh, you say it's a good general brand would fit almost any acoustic guitar, and enhance the flavor of that guitar. Oh yeah, hands down. I've tried them all. Yeah, I tried them all, and my favorite's Dodario, yeah. or Diodario, as yeah. some people call it, made in Farmingdale, New York. Uh-oh, yeah, now, they, you, now you started an argument. Is what? it Dodario or uh, Diodario? When you call them up, it's Dodario. Is it? And, okay. and if you and if you speak Italian, it's Dodario. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> but or French? Oh, it's French. Yeah. Dodario. Yeah. 
But, and there's a couple of different Dario types for acoustics. So. Oh, yeah, man. They got the whole gamut, man. They got yeah. all the metals. They got all the stuff. And they got a brand new set that the one that I've been using, uh, they call them XS. It's got a real super thin coating on it. And mm-hmm. the two plain strings actually have a slick, thin coating on them, too. Okay. Some of the other coated strings, not so much. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, they, got, they got something for everybody. And, cool. Uh, it's just been my favorite string for at least about 18 years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they've, and I've, I've tried the other ones. Yeah. I've gone back and said, am I crazy? Am I crazy? Let me try these. And I go back to this uh, brand X, and then I go yeah. to brand B, and I'm like, nah, let me go back to brand A. Yeah. But, yeah. I always I, play uh, Ernie Ball. Hey, man, top-notch stuff. I like Absolutely. Ernie Ball. Absolutely. But I've, I've never really tried the Dario. I know they're big. A lot of people like them, but oh, yeah. that's my ex's maiden name, and I kind of— Is it really? It, I don't—you know, it gives me—you know, I, don't, I well, got a problem go. with it. But you know what, Ernie Ball, man, he was, uh, you know, he he was a steel guitar player. He yeah. played with Bob Wills. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and his uh, sons, I guess, uh, Sterling and um, I can't remember the other young man's name. But anyway, it's a family-owned Hard, company still. Huh? Hardball. Hardball. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I tell you what, they, uh, they, they're they great, man. Uh, I've, I've used Ernie Ball a number of times over the years. Yeah. And I've never had a complaint about them. It's just that everybody's got their favorite, you know. Sure. Right. So yeah. I keep going back to my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So you just rolled in from Shreveport, and I mean just rolled <laughs> in did. from Shreveport. Yeah. I was actually late showing up just <laughs> yeah. because of a little bit of traffic and uh, poke alongs out there on uh, <laughs> so, coming down out of out of North Texas. Uh, I understand there was a band in a bind, and you kind of did a little quick fill in. Oh how'd yeah, that, how'd that go? Well, I, I got a message the other day, or I saw a message on uh, Facebook the other day that uh, an acquaintance of mine was looking for a guitar player for Saturday night, which was last night, and um, I'd, I'd met the guy. And uh, we, we uh, uh, I messaged him immediately and said, hey, man, I don't have a gig Saturday night. What do you got? And he told me, Shreveport, um, they told me the details. I said, well, uh, you know what? I'm free. Let me see your set list. I said, I, I, I think I can do it, but let me see your set list first. So he sent it to me. And I knew about half the stuff on it. <laughs> See, that's awesome. And <laughs> if somebody sent me a set list, I'd be like, I heard this song before, but I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, thankfully, he's, an easy, he's a guy easy to get along with. And, and yeah. um, I messaged him back. I said, hey, man, I'm going to chart some of these songs out. I said, but but I'm, I'm well familiar with about half of them. I, th- I think I can hang. That's cool. I said, I'm a pretty good, what they call a faker. You yeah. know, I can, I can jump in there and play something stylistically correct, even if I don't know the record licks. Um, but, uh, so and anyway. that's the difference between a musician and a guitar player. Right. Yeah. It really yeah. is. A musician is a guy who can go and fit with the band right off the bat and make it work. Yeah. A guitar player is a guy that sits down and plays guitar and can't. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm kind of a guitar that's player. That's me, man. I know a song. I know that song. Okay. We'll play it in E. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, that'd that's be, it. I'm transposing yeah. no way. Or let's make sure you're in time. I'm going to go ahead and, and insert this click. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> and all of a sudden you fall off when you're playing to a click. Exactly. Yeah, yeah all sorts of things. But yeah, he, uh, um, thankfully, uh, I had my tour bus driver, Adriana, with me, my wife. Cool. Tour bus driver. T-U-R. Uh, yeah, T-U-R, tour bus. That's how you, pronounce, that's how you spell that's it in Porter, Texas, by that's golly. Right. <laughs> and uh, so... She was in the driver's seat, and I had my iPad out and my headphones in all the way up there. And in those four hours that it took to get to Shreveport, I had charted out about 16 songs or 17 songs. Wow. And, That's a long song. You know, and then, and then drone, drilling the, the ones with which I was lightly familiar or not familiar at all, I was drilling the signature licks in my brain, mm-hmm. you know, in that four hours. And so. So you learned 16 good. songs in four hours? Well, no, I won't say I learned them. I just got familiar with them. Just the. Let's say to get real. Can I get technical about guitar Come stuff? Come on, what you been? Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's say I'm one that if I'd have written on this chart, um, white trash distortion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I actually have these notes in my iPad. <laughs> white trash distortion. Okay. Uh, you know, flat seven lick or whatever it is. Okay. okay. So uh, sorry, guys. Whoever's listening to this musician talk. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to bore you with jargon. But anyway. I'm good. So I'll remember that that's white trash distortion on that song. And I'll okay. remember because of that note. Now, every once in a while, I do get real nerdy. You can look through my iPad. And there are some that I actually have to write out manuscript on them, like mm-hmm. the sheet music notes, because I yeah. cannot remember how they go. So thankfully, I'm a reader. And so I could do that. But on this one, so I'll say, for instance, um, that's how I do it, and I'll um, uh, so I get on my pedal board, my effects unit. And I've got and I've got a setting saved in there that just says Skinner, okay, and it's it's 
it sounds like that's uh, your tone, your your target well, tone. That's my white trash distortion because oh, okay. that's you know, <laughs> I like you know it. Skinner's all your white trash favorites. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. And and the, when I set up that setting on a pedal board, I copied the sound from um, the beginning of uh, "Give Me Three Steps," the guitar on "Give Me Three yeah. Steps." So I tweaked the distortion just like that, put a little compression on it. it sounds like I'm playing through a ratty old tube amp, you know. Mm-hmm. And so anyway. So this You're one have song. To send me those settings. I, yeah. I can. It's a dinosaur pedal board. It won't even plug into a light pipe, man. It's all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I'd be glad to give That's you the percentages. Good. But uh, <laughs> but the uh, so anyway, the, like this one song. Um, I think it's called "Beer Never Broke My Heart" or something. It's got a real characteristic mm-hmm. lick on the front of it. Yeah. Gunk, 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 gunk. Anyway, um, so I guess I kind of pulled it off. Thankfully. Um, you know, he sent me the list, I accepted the gig, he accepted me, and the guy had, I'm so, so thankful that for <coughs> some, something I did or said made him hire me, because, yeah, I had a gig. Yeah. However, met some three other musicians whom I'd never played with, never met, and um, he, this guy, Marshall, the front man, name's Marshall uh, Jones, Okay. Uh, his website, if you'd like to check him out, is marshallrockscountry.com and he's got a cool following and uh, he's got some cool originals and I think he's working on a new album right now in the studio but um, uh, thankfully just those little tidbits right there at the gig I think I did pretty well on it uh, overall I mean I messed up some notes here and there but it's live music but yeah, it uh, got buried in the mix. Nobody well, that's what, exactly what I, what I try to do is stylistically do things correctly. Yeah. And if if this song has um, 90s chorus, mm-hmm. because in the ni- 80s and 90s, chorus was running rampant. On oh, yeah. Vocals, guitars, keyboards, you know. And so I've got some of those settings, too. But. Yeah, when I when I tweak that stuff in like that, it really does kind of help sell it a little bit on the yeah, guitar side. Sure, right. you know, even if I don't know the exact notes, if it's a, if I'm trying to quick study like I was yesterday. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't remember what we were talking about before, but I got lost. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. So I have one more question for you. Oh yeah. So who's walked into Fuller's and you were like, oh damn, look. Oh, <laughs> am I supposed to name drop? I, I didn't know I was supposed you to do would. that. You're, you're a big time name dropper. I see your post. <laughs> He'll have oh, some, man. Gu- some guy with a pigtail standing next to him. I was here with Willie. Yeah. Well, that's not Willie, but it's kind of close to Willie. You know? uh, uh, I've actually, been watching okay. It's actually Millie. I, <laughs> I admit, I admit, I do have a folder on my Facebook that says famous people I have met. Oh, that's cool. It yeah. really is. However, look through the folder. You'll see Tina Fey's sister, mm-hmm. um, Sarah Palin's sister. You'll see what you would almost swear is Sammy Hagar. Really? Um, yeah, it's it's hilarious, and it's <laughs> n- none of the people in the folder are famous, but there's some people that have commented on the pictures. Dude, you met Sammy? That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, it's so close. If they don't know it's not Sammy, I can't do anything yeah, about that. Right. Yeah, but everybody's then, happy. But then some people get crabby. That's not Jason Bateman from from Ozark. <laughs> and I'm like, well, he kind of looks. He could like have it. been. Yeah. I wonder if he but plays anyway. guitar. Does he play guitar? Jason I don't know. Bateman? I don't know. But if you watch a stupid video I've got about that whole deal, oh my gosh. But anyway, um, he's one of those guys that's good at everything, though. Jason Bateman. I'll bet he? you he'd be able to play guitar. He yeah. might. He might. Yeah. Um, well, let's see who who's coming in there. I don't have that many. I've only been working there two years and two months. I think now. Okay. So. Uh, the first one that came in there, I was like, whoa, dude, looks familiar. It was Steve Earle. Oh. oh. And, and he's actually been in there twice or three times now that I've been working there. He's, he's a regular. Oh, that's okay. cool. Uh, he, a- he is, from what I understand, that guy knows his vintage instruments, his vintage guitars. Oh, I bet. He's okay. like a brainiac about it, and he's a freak, but he loves vintage guitars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, who else has come in there? Sorry, I got to stutter a little bit. Um, oh, there is a... Huge, huge popular Latin group called Mana. Mm-hmm. I've heard and of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're huge. I, it, it's I had, like. I had a Mexican girlfriend who was all about them. Oh, dude. Well, let me tell you, this friend of mine named Guillermo, he's, he's a guitar player too and plays gigs around. He, um, I, I texted him one day. I said, hey, man, have you ever heard of Mana? And this guy's from El Salvador, and he texts me back. He goes, hey, man, that's like asking a white dude if he's ever heard of Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, they're huge. Well, anyway, the lead singer and the guitar player came in the store one day. Well, that's cool. Yeah. And I didn't know who they were. 
until one of the customers in there says, dude, that's the dudes from Mana. And I hadn't really heard their name since like 1995. See, I wouldn't have known. Oh, I wouldn't have either. But yeah. but I was like, I looked them up on my phone because by golly, that's them. Mm-hmm. And uh, the the lead singer, um, he goes by Fer. His his name's mm-hmm. Fernando. But and then Sergio, and it's so funny. I felt so bad. Uh, Sergio, as you'd say in English, I guess white mm-hmm. trash people. Yeah, <laughs> white folks would say Sergio. Serge. Serge. <laughs> well, anyway, so they came in the store and we got to talking and. Uh, um, I felt embarrassed because after the guy left, I started reading up on him. Mm-hmm. There is a Gibson signature. This guy's name is Sergio Bajin. Uh-huh. There is a signature Gibson we had at the store about three months before he came in to visit us. Yeah. And we sold it. We put it on the internet and sold it like that. Yeah. And I didn't even realize that that was the dude with the signature oh, Gibson wow. guitar. Oh, it's a Les wow. Paul with a special yeah. configuration on it everything. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I felt so embarrassed. So anyway, they just played just this past Friday night at yeah. Toyota, sold out Toyota, Toyota Center again. Oh, wow. Uh, but they didn't have time to come by the store. Uh, but uh, they've come in there. Yeah. So it's Tejano uh, music, I guess. No, right? no, it's like it's like Latin pop rock. Okay. Yeah, it's like huge, wow. huge. Yeah, okay. they, if you look them up, it, it tells like how long they've been together and all this stuff. They're just really worldwide known. And I didn't know oh. they were that popular because I hadn't heard their name. I, mean, I don't listen to a whole lot of that music, so I, was like, right. well, I didn't know they were that big. They are huge. Um, well, you, you know, it's a good thing you didn't walk up and say, hey, you guys ever uh, think about learning how to play guitar? <laughs> <laughs> guitar. Guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Why um, is it in those little Mexican bands at the restaurants and stuff that the biggest dude always has the smallest guitar? And the smallest dude always has the biggest. Well, they plan it. it works they, out like they that. They plan it like that. It works out like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't know what other famous people have come in there. Um, no Alice Cooper, them. nothing like that, huh? No, no. Uh, Kid Rock. Actually, no. I, I, I should have written it down, but um, or brought a list. Well, we didn't have an outline today. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we, but sir, over the years there have been several famous people come there. I I understand that Christopher Cross has been in there a few times. Really. Um, and uh, let's see who else. Oh, I, I guess Billy Gibbon has, Big Billy Gibbons has been in there a few times. Oh, I bet he's um, been there. Yeah. Let's see who else. Um, I can't remember. I can't drop. He's a very recognizable time. figure. It's hard yeah. to hide when you're yeah. looking yeah. like yeah. Billy Gibbons. Yeah, yeah. He, if he's got his yeah. little his little noodle cap on. And, yeah. You know. He came in to get directions yeah. to Andrews. Yeah, well, that's right. That's right. And that's closer to one of his houses. Anyway, yeah. yeah. He, I think he's got a house in Kingwood, from what I understand. Does he? Wow. I think so. I didn't know that. Uh, my friend uh, Sundance is good friends with him. Uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't know Sundance knew him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, I think uh, I think Sundance has a guitar that Billy gave him. I think it's a fire, Gibson Firebird. Damn. I think Billy gave him. Sundance is going to be on the show soon. So we're oh, good. Out. Well, man, he's, yeah, he's a good one, man. Right now, so. That boy, he sings his butt off. Don't I know. He's man, good. He is great. Well, he, he won that. the voice. Talented yeah. guy, talented guy. Yeah. But yeah, I, I can't drop any other names too. of famous He's people. From oh yeah, Border yeah. Texas graduated New Caney High School. That's it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. We do have a, a lot of good talent out here. Oh man, I'm and telling I'm, you, so many, oh, so yeah. many. Good Just people. like back in '03, rewinded when we opened Andrews Music. Yeah, I grew up here. I knew there were a lot of musicians hiding in these woods, mm-hmm. but I had no idea how many musicians there were till we opened Andrews Music. Right. Back in 03, and like they just come out of the woodwork. It's like, hey, there's a music store, music store. Wow. So glad we yeah. opened it. But it's like, man, that's a, there's a big musician community out here. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and all awesome. factions. I mean, you got people that are touring with national acts all the way down to just a dude that just wants to get out there and jam on his front porch or around a campfire with his friends. But there's all sorts of musicians. Yeah, we've got out a here, brand so. new recording studio right here in the, the, the nice. Piney Woods of Splendor, Texas. That's right, Here Studio go. One Three. Yep, y'all hidden need to gym. Check it out. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nice, man. I I can't believe what y'all done with this place. It's yeah. amazing. It's all Hank. This is the man right here. It took oh, six geez. months to build it, so it was rough. That's all. That's it. Six months. That's short. Yeah. Well, he did most of it himself. It seems like it took forever. It really does. Well, I guess it if is. you're anticipating it, I guess it would yeah. be that way, huh? It's just an everyday thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this is uh, this is really nice. Uh, if y'all need to record some tracks, maybe talk to Hank over here at Studio One Three. Well, you thank you. There's your commercial, much. Studio That's One Three. <laughs> so, what are you planning on playing for us today? Um, I don't know. I was asking my wife earlier what sh- if they asked me to sing something. What should I sing? She goes, I don't know. Does she have a favorite song? I 
probably, but it's nothing I sing. She's a rock and roll encyclopedia. <laughs> really? Oh, okay, yeah, cool. man. She's, she could play rock and roll trivia, like Trivial Pursuit, like a board game or something, and just mop it up. She'd beat everybody. Sweet. We'll have to book yeah. her on the next show. Because what she does is she'll stuff. say, I'll, I'll say, man, <laughs> she'll be listening to the rock radio, and, hey, who is this right here? And she goes, it's so-and-so. And then, <laughs> then there's another song. I'll say, man, this right here, this sounds uh, – just like, um, and I'll name a rock and roll because she goes, no, Dodo Bird, it's so and so. You learn your rock and roll. Will you? <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's she's in a rock and roll encyclopedia. Cool. Yeah, her first uh, uh, concert. What was your first concert? R- Rainbow and uh, and who else? Um, who else was playing with them? It was Rainbow and. Uh, uh, I just remember Rainbow. Oh yeah, yeah, that was her first wow. uh, down at Sam Houston Coliseum when she was oh, fourteen man. years old. Right? That's where I saw Led yeah, Zeppelin. That's a pretty uh, anyway you gotta like rock and roll for that stuff that's, that's my cool. first concert was gary wright believe it or not dream weaver himself. Wow. Wow. and yeah. i was about mm, 30 minutes late and uh probably left about mm, an hour early <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> Why? wait a minute you must have had a date just, <laughs> yeah i mean it was just one of those times you, you know, had a girl on your shoulder going can we get out of here yeah i was yeah, hanging sure out with can. a bunch of the wrong people too and so there was a lot just a lot going on <laughs> But yeah, yeah, that's why we were late. Take me down and, to Prince's Hamburger. <laughs> you remember that place? Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. was one over on Shepherd. Yeah, there was yeah. one down um, Washington, wasn't it? Down by, uh, well, not too far from Sam Houston Coliseum, right yeah. over there, right around the Pierce Elevator there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, um, I think I went in there Princess when I was a kid. Was great. But, you know, you say you grew up over there around Jersey Village or where was it? I grew Cy- up in the Heights. In the Heights? Yeah. Oh, in the Heights. Okay, well, yeah. that's where I work. Yeah. 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 Uh, right there at 610 in Yale. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, there used to be a princess right on North Shepherd. Oh, so coming back from 610 back toward um, Washington, that area. He doesn't ever go to the so, Heights yeah. anymore, though. He he stays away from there. You I think he, you want it dead or alive. No, right? I go out there all the time. we got clients out there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, oh, you still doing IT? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's unfortunate. But, nice. Yeah. but, yeah, i got clients out on 11th and Heights Boulevard. Okay. So we service. It's a DOD contractor. So, yeah. Nice. We'll take care of them. So next time, I'm going to have to spin by Fuller's and check it out. That's right. And we do have a bunch of left-handed guitars in do there. Do you really? Oh, yeah. Man, Quite a see, selection. You can't get left-handed guitars anywhere. <laughs> well, there's one main place in Houston where you can get them, and then Fuller's is the next biggest. <coughs> Where's the other main place? The, the guy named Jim has South Paul Guitars. South, South Paul yeah. Guitars. Yeah, and no, he's special. He's, he's got less righties in his store than we have lefties in ours. Really? Oh, yeah. He barely. I went in there one time. I think he had four righty guitars in there. Where's this the place at? Of, I don't know. He had to look him up. I don't yeah, remember what street he's on. But, check it out. But, yeah, Southpaw. I didn't know you. I, I figured you'd know about him. Yeah. Being a Southpaw. Yeah. You could spend all day in there. I could. Maybe even Oh, yeah, longer. man. He, he's cool, dude. He's funny. Okay, uh, but cool. Yeah, Southpaw, man. But, yeah, we got a bunch of lefties at work. Oh, yeah. Cool. Now we got a whole row of them. Strats and tellies. And, yeah. Yeah. So you also amps and stuff like that? Oh too? yeah, yeah, we got, got bo- it all. Boogie and Fender and divided by thirteen. I think we got a few Vox pieces. Uh, yeah. We got a few used amps. Old Fender Bandmaster. Mm-hmm. Um, Is Vox still in business? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow, they've yeah. been around forever. Oh yeah, been around a yeah. long time. Yeah. Oh yeah, one of the big one of the big amp names. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we uh, rearrange things yeah. and, and have him make some noise? Okay, Whatever. guys, so what we're going to do, we're going to break down the set and uh, give these guys a little time, and that way they can make their visit to the lobby and hang out for a bit. And uh, then we'll turn it back up and let him show you what it's like to really play the guitar. Yeah. Don't so the pressure's go. on, Howie. Don't there, <laughs> we there we go. All, All right, right, guys, be back in a few minutes. I 
truly can If your broken heart should need repair Then I am the man to see I whisper sweet things You tell all your friends And they'll come running to me Twenty-four hours a day Hey, baby I'm no handy man Come, 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 come Oh, yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah To me is the main thing I want to say. I'm busy 24 hours a day. Hey, baby, I'm your handyman. Uh, come, 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 come. Walk out on me tonight If you think that it ain't feeling right But darling There ain't no getting over me Well you can say that you need to be free But there ain't no place that I won't be Sweet darling there ain't no getting over me I'll be the face that you see in a crowd I'll be the times that you cry out loud I'll be the smile when there's no one around I'll be the book that you just can't put down so you can tell everyone that we're through And you might even believe it too But darling, there ain't no getting over me You'll see, sweet darling There ain't no getting over me I'll be the bill you forgot to pay I'll be the dream that keeps you awake I'll be the song on the radio I'll be the reason that you tell the boys no Don't you know you can walk out on me tonight If you think that it ain't feeling right but darling, there ain't no getting over me You'll see, sweet darling, there ain't no getting over me Ooh, darling, no, there ain't no getting over me No, 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 no Nah, darling, there ain't no getting over me. Ooh.